my name is Fabrizio Ayolo. Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time to the channel, um, I am the creator of Power State Trooper. So uh, it's a five issue limited series. I do writing, art, lettering, the whole kit and caboodle, currently published by Alterna Comics. And first issues are available at alternacomics.com. So tonight, I'm actually going to be doing some artwork. Um, I have a, what I call like concept art. It's quite a bit more detailed than concept art, but um, I just like to, to uh, come up with characters, settings, and whatnot, and then do some longer illustrations. Oh, hey, Blue Teddy, how's it going? And I immediately realize I need background music. Hey Blake, how's it going? It's Thursday night. It's almost the weekend, I guess. Um, yeah, so this got pretty far last two times. So at this point, I'm going to do a little more detail, clean up some stuff, maybe break out the whiteout, um, put borders because without borders, my brain cannot function. Um, yeah, so I have a few tools. I think I'm going to do old school pen and ink. I also have microns, and then I have two whiteout options. Essentially just like a, a acrylic, and then this Dr. P.H. Martin's Leaf Proof White. So we'll see what works better, or best, I should say. Alrighty. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get to it. The first five minutes is always the worst. I I swear, I don't remember what's going on or how things work, or how to use words or um, any of the above. So one thing I it's funny. You can look at a, a drawing a million times, but um, you set it down for a day or two after working on it and pick it up again, and something is Im immediately apparent. And for me, it's underneath his helmet. Apparently, the ink that I used the first time is very different than the second time, because you can see here how, how much lighter this ink is compared to the shadow in the back. Um, so that really stuck out when I was looking at it last time. Not that you can really do anything about that, you know? Am I gonna go over every line that I did the first time? Probably not. Um, but there might be some key areas, like underneath his helmet, which I, I probably will go solid black on that with a new ink. Hey, Mind Tunnel, how's it going? Alrighty, so I have all of these big shapes done. I got lots of black. Everything looks pretty solid. So I'm gonna start using a pen to sort of ink out of the dark shapes. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna do that for a bit and then I'll probably go in and do some, get some white in there. So these nibs I'd gotten a while ago Sure, I talked about them. Um, I had tracked down the the nibs that uh, Bernie Wrightson used just because, I don't know, why not? Um, and I couldn't get them to work at all. I think they're pretty old, and I don't know what coating, but I could not burn clean or get that coating off of those those nibs. So basically, they ended up being worthless to me, which was a very big disappointment. These, what are they called? G-nibs? They're probably some of the only ones that pop up whenever you look for pen and ink stuff. These have been fantastic, and I haven't even really used them all that much. But out of the box, they work well. 
Haven't really run into any splattering issues or anything like that. So for this background, I, I don't want to go too crazy with the detail because as soon as you do that, then your eyes go into the background. So I just want to kind of soften up a lot of the, the brush strokes that I put down. Especially since this is brick, so texture, there's going to be texture all over them. Um, so just putting like a, a straight, slick black line down sometimes doesn't work all that great. I'm not going to go in with a bunch of just stippling for, for texture, but <clears throat> definitely more than it was than what was there before. I do love traditional pen. That's kind of how I started drawing, actually, many, many years ago. Um, but the biggest issue I always had was smearing my hand, smearing the ink. It just takes too long to dry. So if you're not careful, you will absolutely smear. Just want to make sure that my, yeah, my audio is working. The other thing I noticed um, just the other day is a, a really distinct tangent. I'm off the page here. Um, so I'd put this shadow here on the brick just to break up that, that white space. Um, but then a really distinct tangent to the top of this like frame area. So I got to do something with that. Most likely what I'll do is push this part back, the background, in further into the background. Uh, so you definitely know that it's a different plane and that tangent doesn't become so obvious. I still haven't come up with a name or, or a background for this guy yet, but but I'm sure when the time comes, it will become immediately apparent. And I already <laughs> I already smeared some ink. I cannot be trusted, especially as a left-handed person. The thing that's really satisfying about using a pen is just the, the noise, the sort of scratchiness. You know, that sounds strange, but I guess it just lets your brain know that you're actually doing something. make sure that anything next to the hose has to be more gray because I don't want it to to get to conflict with the uh, very solid black hose so I just got to be careful of that
Probably should actually put a border now. Or very soon. I also really don't want to do every single brick because it'll look strange so you want to do enough to know to give the impression that you know they're uh, staggered and whatnot but if you drew every single brick it would look pretty fake working on a Sleepy Hollow illustration. Maybe I'll, I'll show that in a bit. I think I was talking about it, but I think I have a pretty solid sketch down for that. And this isn't Horror's A2 versus Sleepy Hollow. This is just straight up Sleepy Hollow. Just trying to do some fun themed illustrations while I'm continuing to work on Horror's A2 ver. Also nice because the subject matter is different. You now I'm drawing a horse, and there are no horses in Horse H Uber, so that's always good. Yeah, the ink just lays on the page whenever you're you're using a pen like this. I remember one of the first really big illustrations I did. It was a like a night sky, and I had done the whole sky using a pen. I basically used pointillism so I used dots for the whole sky and just as I was finishing it up I dropped um, ink right in the middle of the sky um, so I turned it into a raven sort of like a night bird looking thing uh, and it made the drawing ten times better so sometimes those so some stakes work out. So his head is a little too... There's not enough going on um, just to really give it form. This kind of looks, this hair makes it look like, uh, almost like a monk's. It's like it's, it's shaved in that shape and not necessarily naturally thinning. Uh, which I kind of like this. So, it's a good example of how 
this sort of concept art starts to carve out the character in little things like that. Like, okay, so if that, let's, let's go down that road for a minute. He is some sort of monk. Um, that's why his hair is like this. So if he is a monk, what kind of monk is he? He's a monk, a giant? Is this a race of giant monks? Sure. And you just kind of let your mind wander down those potential story beats or story. You know, that's not the right music. Yeah, this should be dark here. I missed that. So I'm going to have to take a brush and, and make that black now. <clears throat> but I'll save that for later. Yeah, but it's it's little things like that, little visual cues that that give you an idea of the character, and then that goes back and forth. Now that I know that he might be a monk, I can play up some other aspects of his outfit. And then before you know it, you have a character with a bit of a story. And the thing that I can do too is, once you have a character save, for example, it is a a race of giant monks. Um, now you have to fit that into your current world. So Horus H two. Now I gotta I gotta find a place for a race of giant monks, which sounds pretty fun. I don't even know if I'm going to finish this in an hour. Um, using a pen is just quite a bit slower. I really want to clean this up as much as possible, so we'll see. this glass back it's a little bit of sort of implied reflection like I just did right there it was just too white and it was it was moving forward so now it looks like it's behind his head and his hand and it works much better You always can look for opportunities anywhere to further the story. So, for example, these windows. Okay, we've established he's in a he's a race of giant monks. Um, okay, so maybe these are stained glass windows, and we can tell a little bit of a story in the windows. Now, I didn't, I don't have room for that here, but that's the idea. Hey, Captain Goodnight, how's it going? How big are the monks in the Great Library of the Sightless? Are they actually blind, or are they wearing the blindfold to temporarily lose their sight? You always have, like, uh, real specific questions, which is which is great. Um, Size-wise, they're, they're slightly bigger than human, I would say. I think I had a I did do a drawing of a monk right next to Horus, just so I could could keep the uh, scale correct. But we'll say seven feet, something like that. So they're a little 
large humans, but not too much. Um, we don't actually see what's going on underneath those robes, you know. To me, whenever I see robes, it's like, well, I'm not going to assume there are feet underneath those robes. Um, they could be anything. So, that's kind of how I looked at, at this. Um, oh, as far as the sightless. Um, those are blindfolds. Um, I mean, nobody's watching, so I can, I guess I can tell you. If you look at that big double page spread, I, I actually, like in the top, like they're, they're like these reliefs or, um, blanket on the name. Essentially, there's like a, a gold uh, relief at the top on, right, on the right and the left. And that kind of tells the story of the monks, the founder of the, the library. Um, and it, uh, you probably won't be able to figure it out, but um, there is a lot of information there. So I didn't want to just say, okay, these monks... They look creepy, and they wear these blindfolds. So there is a an actual reason they do all of those things. But that actually a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but they basically blind themselves. It's kind of like um, getting rid of... Uh, one sense to heighten the others. That's kind of how I was thinking of it. But they do that because of something that happened in the founding um, of that pocket universe. This is actually one of those deep lore things that I don't know when we'll actually get to it. Um, I love the library, and we do see some more on its background and its history in issue three, um, but not, you know, not like the nitty gritty deep cut stuff for quite some time. So it's interesting, you know, even when you start a drawing and you're and you say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this loose. You can do that um, to up to a certain point, and you could, and it's actually kind of what I'm doing now, you're kind of bringing it back. So you know, the structure is still there. And as long as you know, anatomy and perspective and, and you can handle that kind of stuff you can stay pretty loose and try to get some energy into the drawing and then at the end tighten it up so now i'm going in and adding just some detail and some things that as i was laying down the original sketches um was a lot harder because again i was i was trying to stay loose So his little neck rig thing um, is quite a bit more detailed and refined now. There's always a fine line between kind of what you're working on now and what's what's on on the docket for sort of the next issue as opposed to the next 12 issues. Um, what I really like to do, I was going to do a little video on this, so this may be a repeat of, of something you'll see later, but I like to really focus on 
what I'm working at any given time. You know, I could lay down an outline for the next 10 issues or something like that. Um, but for me, I find that I get really excited about that. And I find that I'm just mulling over just randomly, like in a commute or something, things that won't happen for six or seven issues. Um, the reason I think that is a problem for, again, for me is that you, you lose, you lose some of the ability to make connections locally. So if I am working on issue four and my headspace is issue, you know, three, cause I just finished it issue four, then it's like you're, you're popping your head into the universe and it's a lot easier to make connections you hadn't thought of in issue three and issue four. Um, but once you once you move on, it's really it, it becomes there's like an urgency in the writing to, to move forward quickly as opposed to this is where I'm at and this is where I want to be. I'm going to utilize this space and these characters and this plot to the best of my ability here. And then later on, if I can reference this issue or something I did in this issue, then that, that lends it, that lends to like a, a long-term continuity. Hey, Dr. Mask, how's it going? I am just doing some fiddly detail on this guy. But kind of digging it. This was supposed to be a loose drawing, and I'm taking it a little, little tighter direction. But I figured, why not? And I just smeared my ink. Again, I cannot be trusted as a left-handed person to do pen and ink, but here I am. So this bottom part, I really didn't touch that at all with a brush. So I definitely need to like refine it, add some, some texture, some, some value in there. This particular like column or like decoration on a wall, um, I'm just going to really keep it simple and barely touch it unless I want to again push this character forward then I'll make sure that there's dark against the light. He's actually popping out of the frame a little bit which that's fine. Um, it's actually, you know, whenever a character jumps out of a frame, um, usually, well, I shouldn't say that. It depends how people, how the artist uses that particular um, approach. As you can tell from the first two issues, I'm not big on panels within panels and odd shaped panels and overlaps very much like sort of the image style. Um, I like, I like regular s shaped panels. I like some pretty standard panel layouts, but if you'll notice, I do break the panel borders in certain scenarios. 
and it is not arbitrary. It's not just because I, you know, I couldn't fit this particular arm into the frame. Um, so I, I really try to, even something like a panel border means something sort of in the world of, of horse a tuber. Blue Teddy, I smear all the time too, and I'm right-handed. Pretty sure in my case, I'm just impatient and a teensy bit clumsy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you try really hard, you're like, okay, I'm going to ink if I'm left-handed. I'm like, top, you know, right to left, top to bottom. But it is so hard because that's not how your brain thinks a lot of times. Um, you really want to jump around the drawing and make sure that you're, you're bumping up the values roughly at the same time. You don't want to just overwork one area and then jump to another area and realize that those values just don't work across the board. I guess I just wanted to complain about being left-handed. And another thing. I know they can't do anything about, you know, the, the ink laying on the page. It's just a, that's just a function of a pen and ink, but I feel like they should be able to come up with like a fast drying ink or something like that. Try to find a safe place to ink. I, I tried pen and ink right away for horse a chuver um just because that was my standard go-to for most of my life um and i thought it would be i thought it'd be pretty cool to do a, you know an old school sort of pen and ink comic but i just i had to accept the fact that it doesn't serve like the character um, like I wanted to, I wanted like the big bold lines of brushes. Um, so it just, it didn't fit and didn't fit the story and the characters like I wanted to. I'm not saying I'll, you know, I'm doing a pen and ink of course a tuber right now, but as far as a full comic, it would feel like a different comic. Um, there's no doubt that, you know, that would change the tone in a lot of scenes and and it would just it would feel different so so i went with a brush question how do you approach your writing do you just do a synopsis and then work it out as you draw or do you script it out um i definitely go back and forth so like this, this drawing is a perfect example. I'll sit down, I'll start looking at shapes, maybe coming up with characters, do another one, you know, keep going until something, something hits. I'm like, oh, geez, um, that could be X or Y. Um, and then once I have that, it turns into, okay, if I have X or Y, I can write this kind of story. Um, so for me, it's definitely a back and forth between the, the, the writing and the art. Um, but the first thing I do, so say for example, this particular scene gave me an idea for a story I want to write. And I'm sort of carving it out in my head as soon as I finish this. I would definitely sit down and do an outline. Um, 
and make sure that I have a story. So for me, if I can't do an outline, then I don't, I don't feel like I have a story. Um, an outline is just like doing a, you know, a three chord version of a really popular song. Either it's catchy or it's not with those three chords. I don't know if that analogy works. <laughs> um, so once I do the, the outline, I'm like, okay, you know, this, this does work. I have a, I have a hook or I have a, I have an ending. That's a big one or a twist or something like that. Then I will take each character or scene and try to hone in on that a little bit. And again, I'll go back to drawing. So I'll start doing thumbnails of a scene. And then a lot of times those thumbnails will evoke something else. So it's it's definitely just a, a back and forth with me. And I, I know some people essentially just write full script or whatever, and then they just they go to drawing it because they don't want they don't want to have to answer any questions when they get to that stage in the drawing. But I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I think I can handle it. <laughs> Now, granted, if somebody else was writing it, I might not be so confident that I could handle the changes. But since I'm the one writing it, I can just make sure it's it's not going to go overboard or it's not going to you know, completely derail me. I, I sit down to write with paper. Um, if that gives you any indication how, like tied I am to the art side of it. I don't know if I could... And once I have an outline and I need to do dialogue and things like that, I don't, you know, I don't need to sketch that out. But at those initial stages, I'm thinking visually and then that evokes dialogue or a scene or something. And then... When do you do the dialogue? Um... I think, and again, I might be a minority in this, but I, I start to picture scenes in my head. Um, and I'm trying to think of a scene from, from, a, from one of the most recent books. But essentially, when, once, once I have a scene in my head of, you know, Horace meeting the big ghost monster guy, um, I hear roughly what they say in my head you know so i know that horace would be very confrontational and he would he wouldn't back down um i would hear slurp be concerned or something like that so i don't necessarily quote unquote hear the dialogue in my head but i definitely feel like i i have an idea a synopsis or a summary of what they're gonna say and then I will just get a first draft of that down because to me that you just got to get it out and everybody says the same thing and they're, they're completely right about the first draft. Just get it down. Don't worry about it. Um, and once I have that first draft, I feel pretty confident that I can edit it into a place that works. So then I'll jump back to the artwork. Now I've actually been, you know, I'll tweak the dialogue uh, up until lettering and during lettering sometimes. So for me, you know, I have the freedom since I'm doing every part of it at any point to adjust the dialogue. If I finish the drawing and the inking and the coloring and it's still not saying what I want it to say at that particular time, then I'll, I'll tweak the dialogue. You know what? I gotta, I gotta clean my uh, pen here. One second.
I'm back. Uh, thanks for all the info. I write anything creative I do on paper. I don't know how creative I would be typing it out. Yeah, there's just... There is something about it. I mean... I, I will see some new-ish writers talk about getting a typewriter because <clears throat> the, the physical act is just different. Again, I know a lot of people do fine digitally, but there are some of us that, that need that tactile experience. So I've been trying trying to think of some some new videos to do, like a series of videos. Um, and I I had an idea of doing kind of like a comic book master class, and there might be somebody out there doing that. And I don't mean me being the master; <laughs> I mean looking at masters. So maybe taking Buscema and kind of dissecting his stuff a little bit, like Simonson, etc. Almost like I would be practicing because that's what I do when I practice. I'll take, you know, I'll take that Thor run and I'll really dissect it and um, try to pull something from it. You know, maybe it's the way they draw hands or the way Simonson does capes or something like that. So I was thinking about maybe doing something like that once in a while. It's like a and again, it's it's how I practice, so it would be very much watching me um, in my process every every step of the way. It was a big thing for me as a teenager getting my own electric typewriter. Yeah, my brother got one. That was that was something. It's funny though, despite how many times and how many books and comics I read. It, the idea that I would ever be writing something is kind of crazy when I think about it. Um, yeah, the fact that I would be writing something years later is, is kind of trippy, but there's no reason not to at all. I mean, it, it's... I'm not going to say it's easy. <laughs> it's like anything else, but um, the barrier to try it out is so is really low um, that's interesting I thumbnail on paper but words are strictly digital for me otherwise I think so much faster than I can write that it gets irritating that's I get that too yeah, I, I, I can see that. I type pretty, I do type fast because I'm a programmer, so I've been doing it for a million years. Um, but I can see that. I guess for me, I don't... I really labor over some stuff, so it's not an issue, but it could be an issue. I can definitely see that. There's always someone doing whatever. Just got to put your own spin on it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, just... Don't worry about if you're doing the same genre or the character. I, like I, that was my biggest barrier in the beginning was I was just afraid. Well, I don't know. Is there somebody? I know it, it sounds a little silly now, but I really thought I'm like I don't know. Is there somebody out there that's doing a, a, a cult detective with a vacuum cleaner in his head? I don't. I don't know. And I kept. I had this fear that okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. And then one day I'm going to find it and everything will be for naught. But there's no reason to worry about that at all. You know, if you're, you know, stealing something and if you're not stealing anything, then I, I don't worry about that at all. Captain Goodnight, thanks for the tip about the release in the library. Looks... Uh, looks like a blinding ritual on the upper left and upper right. Someone's about to be disemboweled by a bird-headed creature. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, so all of that kind of stuff, I, I try to think through. Because I, I, don't, I don't want arbitrary detail 
in in the books since I spent so much time on that library. So all the, those reliefs or those um, oh my god, I'm, I'm blanking on the art term of those um, things, but yeah, there's definitely a story behind all of that. Red centric, the boiled frog. How's it going? In my last couple of years in high school, I was writing movie scripts. My final project was a script of Frank Miller's Rona comic. What? Man. Ronan blew my mind when that thing came out. It really did. The art, story. That was really something. Actually, it's funny too, because Ronan was also one of the first comics that I could give to a friend of mine that never read comics. And I'm like, it's samurai and sci-fi. Just read it. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't... It was one of the first that I could really just hand off to people, and I knew that they would really get a kick out of it. Blue Teddy, I'd say you went niche enough to be relatively safe. I know. I know it sounds kind of ludicrous now, but I think we all suffer from that. If, if you ever want to make something, that's... That's the first thing that like holds you back. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's the only thing, but it definitely, it's up there. Yeah, no one is saying another one. Not another one of those vacuum guys. Yep, no doubt. Yeah, when I was at Baltimore, I kept thinking, okay, I do realize I'm niche of a niche right so let's say comic books in general are niche which they are so i'm niche okay and it's definitely niche of a niche because it's not superheroes or anything like that i'm like okay niche of a niche that's not too bad but by the end of baltimore i'm thinking did i go niche of a niche of a niche am i three niches deep I, i'm still unsure about that FYI, my husband was when he saw your art. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. This one's turned out pretty good for what originally was supposed to be concept art. Um, wow, I'm at 48 minutes. Yeah, I can definitely go another session with this. Um, since I'm liking where it's going. I can get... I can put enough work into it to take it to a really polished, finished piece of art that started out pretty rough. I mean, I was pretty... I was not too gentle with layouts and, and all that kind of stuff. Perspective, et cetera, et cetera. Things that I'm, I'm usually very particular about, I really kind of... I let that slide just because I, I wanted to something a little different. He's up through the niches. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm three niches deep. Time will tell. I will say this, at least this isn't a room of books because I've, I've drawn, I'm not going to say too many books, I've drawn a lot of books. So bricks are a, a nice change of pace. So I definitely did something I'm not a fan of, which I've been trying to correct here is I, I put a line on this front and it's a really thick line, too thick, thicker than it should have been. So I'm, I'm just trying to correct that a little bit. <clears throat> Essentially by making the background dark. So you don't, you don't, it's not as noticeable that that was a big, thick black line. 
Is it bad there? Is it bad to be three niches deep? Is there an optimal niche quota? You tell me because I, I don't know. I, I always use myself as like a customer. You know, what kind of stuff I like or liked, you know, what kind of stuff would I buy? Um, that's always, you know, I think everybody kind of does that. Um, so that being said, you know, I think I would buy Horse H. Uber. I guess it depends. I don't know. Like if I was in a comic book store and I'm, I'm looking around, the covers kind of pop. So for me, that would be a, that'd be a pretty big selling point as opposed to the colors, the covers that just kind of, they're all muted. And again, there's nothing wrong with muted, but uh, there's a reason that, that your eye is drawn to certain, certain comics and certain covers. I mean, I, w I think I would buy this comic if I had never heard of it or known about it. Um, I think a lot of that can be marketing too. Um, you know, if somebody sees one image of Horsey Tuver, they could think it was goofy or just silly. Um, but hopefully I've been putting out enough material that kind of puts that to rest. You know, I don't think you would see this and think it's just kind of spoofy and goofy. Potentially, but I mean, it's it's definitely got a, a different feel. Well, clearly I'd buy it since, you know, I, yeah, I know. And I appreciate that. Um, I do. I just, you know, these are things that we, we have to think about. Um, but again, like I was saying, even if it is three niches deep, then you gotta kind of tweak your marketing a bit, or or your imagery, or your stories. Um, you know, I don't want people to think that the type of stories they're gonna get in Horse H. Uber is gonna be the same. You know, there's gonna be some pretty sad stories, some tragic ones, some funny ones. Um, Are you a fan of the flaming carrot? That is something weird, but on the goofy side. I have... I don't know how many flaming carrots I have. But it has been so long, I vaguely recall the flaming carrot. It was funny, I was going through my comics catalog and then I'm like, hmm, and I pulled them out. And I, I don't want to say I forgot about them, but because I hadn't thought about them in so long. I did like them, but that is even almost a little too little too goofy I think goofy's fine to a degree um, I always talk about Guru so like Guru was my goof um, or what or not what if what was the spoof or what if what the I liked what the um, Oh, you know what, dude, has anybody ever read Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew? That, I felt like that was a sweet spot because it was, they were animals and it was kind of goofy, but it was kind of cool too. So I think it was like a, a sweet spot. Not that you were copying MC Escher, but there's something about your art that talks to me like MC Escher art does. And it is awesome. Wow. That is some high praise. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I I love that art. As far as sort of non-comic book art influences, I don't know if I ever talked about it. Um, obviously, Hieronymus Bosch, which is where Horace gets his middle name, of course. And I'm definitely going to be using some, some imagery. from his stuff, which is just crazy, really trippy, trippy stuff. Uh, a little tongue-in-cheek tongue, tongue in cheek that I was I was going to use it, but um, just because I, I've always loved his paintings. Yeah, it is over the top. 
guy has a gun that shoots below me. Yeah. I did read Captain Carrot. It's been so long. Yeah, again, it's been forever for me, but I felt like it was a it was a, a good tone. Not too goofy, but you know, they are still animals. Alright, so so where are some areas that I've sort of will not touch? Definitely here. Because we want his legs to pop forward. We want his arm to pop forward, but we want the, the ground actually to go back a little bit. So I'm gonna work on that a bit. Yeah, I think being so loose originally definitely gives, presents certain problems with things I would be really careful with. Like this line right here in his cloak. I would have never made it that thick. Um, yeah, but, you know, sometimes you're just, you're just trying to get some form down, try to stay loose, so being really particular about the, the width of the line isn't something you can... If you stop to think about that, you kind of lose it. So. Even though I've been I've been drawing for a very long time, <clears throat> there are certain rules in your head that you just you always have to repeat. Um, sometimes you get in you get in the zone drawing, you kind of you forget them. Um, like for atmospheric perspective, anything the closest things to you are going to be have the most contrast, have the darkest darks, lightest lights, and it's going to get less and less detail and contrast as you go back so it's just one of those things that you've just got to remember and sometimes the tendency is okay i'm just gonna, i'm going to draw every brick and every brick is going to have all this detail it's going to have all the little ambient noise type stuff cracks and all that. but then you're gonna you're gonna ruin the illusion of, of depth when you do that. So you may be adding detail, but you lose depth, which is actually more important than detail. I like so many genres. I can always find something to read. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, trying to think of, of the not craziest, but sort of out there book. Um, Yeah, I can't. I can't think of anything that would be kind of crazy. Now, I, I admittedly, I never got into like Harvey Pekar type indie comics, um, slice of life. I like them, but it, and I'm trying to think of one I've actually read. Um, I'm sure I read some over the, over the years, but it's just it's not something I gravitate towards. I like something a little bit fantastical. I was thinking about Concrete the other day. I don't know if anybody's ever read that. It's been a long time since I read it, but I love that. You know what? I'm going to rule the borders real quick before I finish. One second.
shit. Uh, I was talking when my mute was on. <laughs> I read, I finally read uh, an issue of Reed Fleming, the world's toughest milkman. It was okay, funny in spots, not sure I'd read anymore. I don't know that. Yeah, I was thinking, um, I was thinking about kind of just rereading books. Instead of getting anything new, um, ones that I, th I remember being really cool and seeing if they hold up. Just, I do that with movies. It's always, it's really educational as far as writing and creation, creation <laughs> and creating. Um, to see what kind of things hold up when you were younger to today. It's kind of an interesting exercise. So this is what I'm going to be doing, I think, this weekend. Um... I just wanted to do a straight up Sleepy Hollow drawing. So. Did I swear? Did I totally swear? Yeah, sometimes that happens. I didn't know. Um, yeah, so this weekend I'm going to be doing, I think, I'm going to be drawing. I don't think I'll be able to ink uh, Sleepy Hollow here, so. If you're around on the weekends, pop in. In the meantime, we'll take one last look at it and then call it a night. It's definitely getting there. <laughs> that figures. <laughs> oh well. Um. Yep, and I have to fit it, fix his hair, get the white out, but probably be able to finish this next time. Although I said this, I said that last time too. Anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for popping in. I appreciate it. Um, I'll probably do a stream this weekend. Hope everybody has a good evening, and I will talk to you later. <laughs> More horses? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I uh, glutton for punishment on the horse thing, but I, it's. It's Halloween, and I, I love Halloween so much that I have to do at least one legit Sleepy Hollow drawing. So, we'll see how that works out. Alrighty, sounds good. I'll talk to everybody later. Thanks a lot.